Oh, hello. It's me, ya boy. Beer 52's resident history boy. You know what I miss? Going to the pub. You know, there's nothing better than getting to have a relaxing pint with a mate, just discussing things like politics, art, who would win in a fight between a horse-sized duck and your mate Dave, who has way too detailed a strategy for this exact scenario. The pal you can have a good drink with is invaluable. <laughs> Some would say unquantifiable. <laughs> they would be wrong. Welcome to a Beer Through the Ages ranking special. We're going to find the best historical person to have a beer with, objectively. Why? Because nobody said no when I pitched this idea, and it's too late to stop me now! <laughs> So let's get into it. We all know what this kind of question entails. We've selected some names from the annals of history, and we're going to put them on the same scale to find out who would make the best historical drinking buddy. We will be ranking them on the following criteria. Impact. You drink it with a historical figure. You're going to want to brag about it. It's what the kids are calling clout today. Is what they do interesting? You're meeting for the first time, you're naturally going to talk about what you do for a living. How much banter do they have? It's a pub, not a lecture theater. Wow us, or make us laugh. Good listener. Conversation goes two ways, everybody. Ability to engage in the deep chats, TM. Look, we've all been there. You've had a few pints. You get into the really deep stuff, the stuff that's been on your mind for such a long time, and you just need to let it out. You want a historical drinking buddy who's gonna be there for you. So that's our ranking criteria. From there, we took our list of historical names and we put them into four different categories, which are Philosophers, the thinking man's choice. Artists, this category covers everyone from playwrights to poets, heck, even magicians. Political leaders, the people of the past who held power over large groups of others. Scientists, the thinking man's other choice. We'll talk about people from each of these categories before finally giving our top picks at the end of the video. There's going to be some names there that you're not going to recognize. I do recommend you look them up after this video because some hella cool people in history. Let's get into it. Ah, uh, philosophers. The people who think about the thinking behind thinking and stuff. We've got a top five of philosophical minds that I think would make good historical drinking buddies, starting with, bam, René Descartes. Considered by some to be the father of modern Western philosophy, you may know him as the guy who said the famous quote, cogito ergo sum, je pense dont je suis, I think, therefore, I am. He's scoring high on impact and listening for sure, a bit low on banter, but where he truly shines is the deep chats TM. This guy is going to make you question everything you took for granted about your perceptions of reality. But then he's going to build you right back up using fundamental logic and truths. You are going to end the night knowing some things for certain, some things not so much, but you are ready to investigate more. Speaking of philosophy daddies, we've got BAM! Socrates. Ah, uh, good old Socrates, the guy behind Plato, who was in turn behind Aristotle. He's the founder of Western philosophy, impact, a check. This mad lad was so radical and engaging, he was sentenced to death for corrupting the youth of Athens. Banter, a check. Was he a good listener? I present the Socratic Dialogues, check. And while we're at it, double check for the old deep chats. Are there downsides? Sure. He thought all philosophy was training for death. That's a bit of a killjoy, if you ask me. Uh, he asked more questions than he answered in, uh, you know, conversation. If you take the gossip of some playwrights, not the cleanest of fellows. But at the end of the day, he is all about virtue. So you know he's going to make sure you don't do anything embarrassing on your night out. Moving on, we have Philippa Foote. Now, you may not have heard of her, so impact would be low, but she is a founder of contemporary virtue ethics. So when it comes to those moral conundrums, 
Philip has got your back. Then, when you've had a few, you stumble home, go to sleep. Fairly peaceful night, until suddenly you are awoken by the sound of a tram coming down the hill. You find yourself standing at a fork in the tracks. On one track, five strangers. On another track, your new friend Socrates. Philippa presents you with a lever to save the five by switching the track and killing Socrates. You know you shouldn't kill anybody, but what are your choices? And Philip is taking notes behind you and timing your reaction, and the tram is hurtling down the hill, and you wish you'd paid attention in all those philosophy lectures instead of just watching Speed on rerun. Why were you watching Speed? Why is Keanu Reeves in it? Why does Dennis Hopper say don't mess with daddy? Daddy's not a thing in 1994. It's not a meme. It doesn't make sense. He's not a father. This was a joke. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, Philippa Foote did not, you know, send a tram down a hill towards strangers. She did invent the trolley problem, but yeah, not in real life. Uh, so, you know, points for not being a tram murderer? Also, Speed's very good. You should watch it. Karl Marx. Probably one of the most influential thinkers of all time. He's had an impact on economics, politics, philosophy, history, you name it, through his writings Das Kapital and the Communist Manifesto. Is that why he's on this list? No. It's because he has a pub crawl. Any one of these would be a fantastic pick for this section. But are they the best? No. John D is. Who is John D? I hear you ask. Well, I'll tell you, camera one. He was a bona fide court wizard. Wizard. He was the scientific advisor for Elizabeth I and amassed one of the biggest libraries in the country at the time. The most interesting thing he did was try and commune with angels through a mix of maths and a made-up language called Enochian. You probably hadn't heard of him, so impact scores are a bit low. But interest and banter? Through the roof. You want to talk about deep chats? Sure, he's going to give you the answers of a crazy person, but are you honestly telling me you don't want to hear what the angels have to say about you getting back together with your ex-wife Brenda? Huh? Next category. So, artists. It's a big category, and we don't have time to go fully in-depth on every one of these, so I'm going to read off a speed round of our picks for the artist section. Aeschylus, Greek Tragedian, Tragedian, tra tragedy, Tragedian, tragedy, tra tra Greek th tragedy theatre guy, uh, killed by a falling tortoise, which objectively is the funniest story you can hear while drunk. Shakespeare. It's Shakespeare. Actors are a big one. You could have anyone from Mae West to uh, Robin Williams to John Boyega, uh, and you're gonna have a good time. So we'll consider this a freebie. Pick your own. It's all gonna be good. I'm picking Toshiro Mifune. Why? Because he's handsome devil. Also, he was the original pick for Obi-Wan Kenobi. Lord Byron, pros, has a pet bear. Cons, you have to listen to him cry about Keats the whole time. Toby Jansen, creator of the Moomins, objectively the most wholesome characters in all of fiction. Hayao Miyazaki, amazing artist, avowed leftist, and environmentalist. Stick a Studio Ghibli film on and tell me you do not feel something. Dolly Parton, Advocate for children's literacy, a venerable god of country music, and you just know she's gonna crush it at karaoke. Bob Ross. It's Bob Ross, guys. Bob, happy little trees, Ross. Bob, there are no such things as accidents, Ross. Bob, I'm a chill beacon of good vibes in a world that is cruel and chaotic. Ross. You know he was an army drill sergeant once? Then he just got so tired of shouting that he vowed that he'd never do it again. You know that he kept squirrels? Nursed little baby squirrels and you got to see them on his show? It's Bob Ross, guys. It's Bob Ross. Next category. Queens, kings, prime ministers and presidents, lords and earls and all that good stuff. We'll nominate one for each category. Our queen slot goes to the world's greatest pirate. Cheng Yatso. Not only was she a formidable warrior, but she took on government officials and the British Navy and won. 
She also organized a pirate fleet of 70,000 ships. And when she retired, because she was allowed to retire, she got pardons for all her crew, a merchant fleet of her own, and they got to keep all the plunder that they had stolen. Cheng Yat So has enough stories to tell to make her the pick hands down. The king. Really, there was only one choice here, and that was Charlemagne. Why Charlemagne? Because he united Western Europe, encouraged education, and encouraged the use of just rule. High, high good listener scores here. And look, I studied medieval history at university, so I find him interesting, and I think he's going to have good banter. And you know what? It's my list, not yours. The Lord. We could talk about Enrico Dandolo, the blind doge of Venice who stormed the gates of Constantinople during the Fourth Crusade. We could also talk about Tycho Brahe, the brass-nosed nobleman who fought a duel over maths, potentially had an affair with the Queen of Denmark, and... Yeah, he got his pet elk drunk. The, that's the reason why he's not the top of this list. Do not get your pets drunk. Do not do it. I'm watching you. Don't do it. But the winner of this slot is William the Marshal, the greatest knight. You want to talk about deep chats? When he was a boy, he was put on a catapult as a threat to his father in a besieged castle. The dad didn't even blink. He just said he could make another son. F let's unpack that, Bill. You know? Let's, let's examine what that was like as a motivation for you just beating on people for the rest of your life in melee tournaments. What was King John like? F I need to call my dad. The president. Yeah, I, I just wanted to pick something a, a bit, like, you know, objectively good. So I chose Jose Mujica, the former president of Uruguay. Jose donated 90% of his salary to charities that helped the poor. He lives on a farm with his wife, Lucia, and their three-legged dog, Manuela, just growing chrysanthemums. You know what that is? That's wholesome. That's wholesome as fuck. Look, you're going to go out for a drink with this guy. Maybe he brings his dog. You get to play with a three-legged dog. That's awesome. Maybe he brings you some flowers. Some flowers, guys. When was the last time you got flowers? You deserve flowers. Good listener? Absolutely. No question. And in fact, to wrap this up, I got a quote from the guy himself. Life can set us a lot of snares, a lot of bumps. We can fail a thousand times in life, in love, in the social struggle. But if we search for it, we'll have the strength to get up again and start over. The most beautiful thing about the day is that it dawns. There is always a dawn after the night has passed. Don't forget it, kids. The only losers are the ones who stop fighting. Science! Beakers! B Bunsen's burners, burners belonging to B Bunsen atoms. I know science. Let's go drink some. Let's go. Let's go have a drink with some scientists. I'm tired. Ada Lovelace, the first computer programmer. Interesting. She can give you all the stories about Faraday, Dickens, and Byron. Remember Byron from earlier with the pet bear? Banter. She also has a few beers named after her, such as Wildcard's International Women's Day Lovelace IPA. So, Impact? Hell yeah! And maybe a few beers, for free, because her name's on them. Richard Feynman. By all accounts, a fantastic communicator of science and an entertainer. A Nobel Prize winning physicist who was also published several times. He actually has a wonderful biographical graphic novel about him, which you should absolutely read. Uh, even if you're not into science, it's just fantastic. Catherine G. Johnson. Without her, Apollo 11 would never have been successful, and Apollo 13 would have ended in tragedy. She literally wrote the book on rocket science and was one of the first African-American women to work at NASA. What more can you say than that? Space, guys. Space is cool. No one can convince me space isn't cool. We've been through a lot together, folks. And I want to thank you for joining me on this journey to find the 
ultimate, undeniable, quantifiably best historical person to have a beer with, objectively. We've, we've come a long way. But now let's see who our top picks really are. Julie Daubeny. Do you like swashbuckling adventures? Opera? Love? Then Julie is the bisexual badass for you. She once fought a duel with five different noblemen because she dared to dance with the woman they were all trying to court. Escandalo! The way she earned money was to go around France just dueling folks with her girlfriend who she rescued from a nunnery by burning the mother down. What? What? How is she not more famous? Look into my eyes and tell me that she does not deserve everything. BBC miniseries, the least you can do is buy her a f***ing pint. But you know what? We've had fun, but who am I to tell you who the best person to have a drink with is? Historical or otherwise. The best person is the one that you choose. They're the best drinking buddy. Isn't that right? Wrong, sucker! It's Gambrinus! The guy was the king of beer. The king of beer! The king of beer! Who are you gonna get that's better than the king of beer? Look at him. Sitting on a keg with his fancy trousers. He is mentioned in the English ode called the ex ale to ale. To the praise of Gambrinus, the good British king that devised for the nation by the Welshman's tale, 1700 years before Christ did spring, the happy invention of a pot of ale. That's the drinking buddy you need. That's the drinking buddy you deserve. On May Day, he hangs out with French kings and just, you know, chat sh eats food, drinks beer, and it's all around this thing called a Teufel Stitch, a devil's table. Do you not want to be a part of that? I want to know, what's the sitch at the stitch, mother What's the sitch? And I hear what you're saying. You're, you're, you're watching this and you're like, Doug, Doug, surely, surely this man's mythical. He doesn't really exist. He doesn't count. Well, guess what, my He does. One possible origin is John the Fearless. Objectively, a really badass nickname. It's either him or John the First, Duke of Brabant, which was a region that covered Brussels, a major beer producing power. So it counts. It counts. Gambrinus, king of beer, king of the historical drinking buddies, the ultimate, unquantifiably best, objective choice. End of discussion.